Good morning, Asia. Welcome to the Asian preview in the North American wrap from Privateer FX. Well, today was a little bit of an old school currency type day where we had some uh, heightened volatility, a lot of intraday volatility. It was uh, one of these days where there wasn't much economic data, but we did have several events that uh, shook things up a bit. And uh, as you can see here from the chart of the British pound, this one had a wild ride today. Again, it was a, a bit of a, what we like to call headline pong, reference to ping pong match, where things were up and down like a whore's drawers. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's just go over some of the stuff that, like overnight in, in Europe, we, when New York walked in, we had some strength in, uh, in dollar Turkey, dollar Norway, Euro Norway, there was some weaker Norwegian um, data out that caused some of that weakness. And then the, 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 uh, the weakness was showing up in sterling, some of the sterling crosses. So the theme was kind of uh, Norwegian crone weakness, sterling weakness, and some Kiwi strength to, to kind of start out the New York session. Um, we had the Senate uh, uh, budget committee vote on tax reform. We were waiting for that. That came, it was in the afternoon. There was also some headlines out uh, from Corota who there was a little bit of a pushback on the yield curve control. This could be a big deal this, in bigger picture. We need to watch for Kikasso's speech in Tokyo this week. If there's any backtracking at all, the yen could weaken. So higher dollar yen, higher cross yen. Um, it was interesting, the Kuroda comments came out when dollar yen was sitting near the lows, and uh, they seem to be a bit sensitive to the, the recent yen strength. So that's something to watch during during your session and, and, the, and the rest of the week. Um, we also had the month end value date fixing, which is, as most of you know, um, it's two days prior to month end. And a lot of the times you'll see dollar buying from the corporates, from the U.S. corporates and a month end hedging program. And uh, we did indeed see that as we approached the, the, the fix window today. Um, sterling got hit the hardest. Um, you can see it here. was the uh, let me let me find this here so so cable was up at uh, cable was up at around 13260 and uh, let me try to find it here hold on one second Anyhow, so cable was around 132.60 when the at the early part of the uh, actually it looks like they went a little bit early today. Um, oh, here it is. I think I have my yeah I have my time wrong here. Sorry about that. So you can see here, here's the fix window right here, this this bar. So we're trading around 132, we went up to 132, uh, we were trading around 132.70 when it came out in the fix. You can see this is a big sell-off in this bar. Got all the way down to 132.21, which was the lows of the day. We hung around down here for a bit. Uh, the euro was also hit uh, pretty hard. You can take a look at the uh, the euro chart, but the euro, euro is kind of in a downtrend all day long. Um, but cable is definitely the bigger move, the bigger move down in the in the fixed window, and that was just that's just corporate activity where they're 
buying dollars for their month end, and they like to do that two days before the actual month end. So cable consolidated down here in the 132.20 to 40 range, and around midday New York, cable started to rally on the back of a Telegraph article that was highlighting there was an agreement with the EU on the Brexit divorce settlement. And they were floating around 40, it came out in the, in the, in the Telegraph, came out, it was a 45 to 55 billion euro uh, divorce bill settlement. You can see what Cable did here, went straight up. It actually came out on Twitter early on, Telegraph and a few others were tweeting it. And then we got to about 132, 80, 90, and we had the next, next little leg up here, the next half hour. And that was uh, uh, once Bloomberg released it. But it was a good 10, 10 to 15 minutes early on Twitter. So that, that's interesting. So you know, keep that in mind. Twitter seems to be a better uh, medium of uh, news these days than even the, the major news sites. So we got up. We rallied up as high as... Um, Looks like we got up to about 133.68.70, and then you can see this bar. Let me widen this out. This bar right here, someone out of the UK government said they had no, they basically denied that there was any sort of uh, verbal agreement with the EU. Went from 133.70, this bar, see we got all the way down to 132.60 so this shook out a lot of the longs that it bought on the uh, positive brexit developments all the way back down here but you can see this 15 minute bar we closed back up here 133.17 which was basically unchanged on the day and uh, and then continued higher and we came off a little bit late late in the day um, that provided some good opportunities for the uh, the shorter term momentum players. But right around the same time that this bill was being or that this uh, news was being denied by the British government on this on this sell off, North Korea fired a ballistic missile that was reported from Yon, Yonhap um, out of South Korea, and dollar yen you'll see here. That dollar yen went, it was right around midday New York or midday Chicago. Dollar yen went from 111.40, you can see this low here, down to 111.05, and then bounced again. Um, one of the things that was a, a bit worrisome is that the, the trajectory of this missile was 45, I believe I read 4,500 kilometers in the air and a lot of the analysts are saying that this this type of missile would have the ability to reach not just the west coast of the united states but dc new york all all the major financial centers in in uh and you know the political center of uh united states so the market definitely was a bit worried about that we had some risk off it was very brief once again the nasdaq the s p were buy the North Korean headline news and sell it when it lands safely in the Sea of Japan, which is exactly what happened today. And you can see here on the NASDAQ, here's the NASDAQ sell-off. We actually were putting in an outside reversal day lower in the NASDAQ at one point below this 6390 area, jumped back up and, and, and ended up closing up in here and it was uh, turned into a reversal day higher. So we did make new all-time highs in the S&Ps and then the NASDAQ, um, which is just the way that here's a S&P daily chart, huge up day. They are not concerned at all about North Korea. We did have some positive developments. The Senate budget uh, was just past 2.30 New York time where they had enough votes to advance the GOP tax bill, and that was what we were expecting. And now it has to be voted on in the Senate, which could happen as, as early as tomorrow um, from what we're reading. And you take a look at um, 
go back to dollar yen you can see how, how dollar yen uh, responded to that back to the hourly chart this news came out right around here it had a strong up, up move so it shook off the North Korea worries once again and then you know had a, had a pretty strong close up here at 114.40.50 area so you know we're, we're, we're we need to keep a close eye, I think, on this level here. Um, this Asian high on uh, the open, Monday morning open, was this 111.70. It's the high of the week. There's going to be some stops now. I would I would imagine that people have been selling dollar yen and, and becoming very frustrated with it. So keep an eye on that. A lot of people talking about us being back over 112 in the next uh, 24 hours or so. Um, let's take a look at some of the reversals today. That there were some interesting patterns. Um, here's the British pound. Obviously, this is all on the Brexit announcement. We had a nice reversal day higher with this long wick lower, and that was the fix-related sell-off, but we closed higher on the day. You know, there's some people calling for, you know, 134 plus by the end of the week, and I, I don't really argue. I don't argue against that. Sterling yen. Pretty close to an outside reversal higher day just shy uh, of closing over yesterday's high uh, the euro we had the reversal lower yesterday and today's price action was pretty much straight down a lot of this was fixed driven and never really recovered from the fixed sell-off here's a euro sterling showing more sterling strength made a new high closed well below the previous day's low this chart's looking increasingly bearish. Probably a test here of the 200-day down at 87.90. Looks in the cards in the next 24 hours. Aussie, nothing much. A little bit closed a little bit lower than where it opened. Kiwi made a new high. We took out these stops here above 69.20, 69.28. Got those intraday, closed lower on the day. It's pretty weak as well, considering the RBNZ came out and said that they were easing the uh, LVR rules and the initial deposit for homeowners are is 35% from 40, starting Jan 1. Kiwi caught a little bit of a bid and rallied about 15, 20 points and then reversed lower and actually closed in the lows of the day. So this is, uh, you know, this is still one we want to be short. I feel like some of these shorts have covered. Positioning is not quite as crowded as it was. But I'm still looking for this to to go, you know, much lower and close lower by the end of December. Um, 69.30 is that uh, last year's close, so that's something we're watching. And we will go over all the in, the, in the next week or so, we'll start talking about last year's closes for all the major currencies, just to give you an idea of where we are um, on the year. And uh, as you can see here, Kiwi is kind of messing around with uh, with last year's close. So let's take a look and see what data we've got. Um, looks pretty quiet in Asia. No real data to speak of. Uh, OPEC meetings are tomorrow and Thursday, uh, or maybe it's yeah, maybe it's just tomorrow. Um, we got a couple of Fed speakers tomorrow. Bank of, Bank of England Governor Carney speaks. Ramsden speaks from the Bank of England. Uh, Fed Chair Yellen testifies for a last time. And we have the crude inventories. Uh, the API inventories reported a bigger build and oil came under a little bit of pressure in the, in the past couple of hours. So that should do it. I, you know, again, it was a volatile day. We haven't seen moves like this in a long time in the currencies. I personally don't think it is anything more than a one-day wonder. Uh, North Korea is on our radar again. But, um, you know, stocks are flying, making new highs, new high, new high daily closes. And I don't see why what, what's going to really stop that. Clearly, it's, the market isn't concerned at all with... Uh, with some of these geopolitical risks. All right, well, good luck in trading and uh, look out for us on the uh, European Open. All the best.